This is Dr. Lisa Marie Bobby, and you're listening to the Love, Happiness, and Success Podcast. song was appropriate for our show today. It's called First Date by Dot Tape Dot. And I liked how they included a little bit of audio awkwardness in there because first dates can be just that. They can be awkward, anxiety provoking. But I think you'll agree even more anxiety provoking is not having any first dates to go on to begin with. And That's what we're doing here today on the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast. I will be speaking with cyber dating expert Julie Spira on how to make online dating work for you. I figured it was timely because we are quickly coming up on Valentine's Day. I have a lot to say about Valentine's Day, so stay tuned. We're going to have a few podcasts on the subject, but I know that one of the concerns people have at this time of year, especially if you're single, is having a valentine to love on around the 14th and you know we just see all of these romantic things and hearts and flowers and chocolates and everybody asks you what you're doing on valentine's day and if you're single I know that you want to be doing something awesome on valentine's day this year and so that's what we're going to be talking to Julie about. I don't have many new announcements for you today. Business as usual here at Growing Self. Um Let's see, the happiness class coming right along. If you're interested in taking the free online happiness class, you can do so, growingself.com. You'll see sign-up boxes, and you could also go straight to the happiness class website, which is the-happiness-class.com, and that is a program that I'm super excited about. I basically took all of the skills and strategies that I kind of routinely teach my private clients, and I figured I'd put them in an online training program, so. That's there if you want to check it out. If matters of the heart have been on your mind, I have also put together a number of new free resources for you. So um, you'll see different sign up boxes. I have some free relationship advice that's available to you on relationship pages, um, dating advice in particular, if you want to check that out. So just click around the website growingself.com and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, You'll just have opportunities to sign up for different um, free resources and things. And also you can go back through the archives and check out podcasts on subjects that interest you. Um, If you do, and also if you like this one, I hope that you would consider writing a review saying so. You know, that's, that's pretty much what we do for marketing around here is just relying on word of mouth. And so if you like this show, if If you learn new things or get something out of it, it would be wonderful if you could say that publicly. So you'll see um, opportunities to go to iTunes and write a review and also subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss anything. So, and I thank you in advance for your support. It means a lot to me. Okay. That's all I needed to mention. Um, Oh, wait, one last thing. As you may or may not know, well, you know, if you've listened to this show for any length of time, I really try to um, talk about things, interview people that are on topics and subjects that are important to you. And I love it when people get in touch with me with their questions. I have I have a list that I, I compile. And so I'm actually in the process of putting together a relationship show. I've had so many wonderful dating, breakup, and relationship questions coming in lately. So I'm going to be attending to a lot of those if there are other things though that are on your mind please get in touch with me i'd love to hear about what's going on with you you can email me directly dr lisa at growing self.com get in touch with me on facebook facebook.com forward slash dr lisa bobby <laughs> but at dr lisa bobby on twitter too so one of those ways get in touch and i'd love to hear about what's going on with you Okay, that's enough about me. Let's jump right in to our conversation with Julie Spira. Julie is kind of a big deal. She is a frequent guest in the media for online and mobile dating advice. She has been on CBS, CNN, 
NPR, and I am so excited to have her on the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast with us today. Thank you, Julie, for being here. I am so excited to be here, and the timing is so right to be talking about love. It is. We're coming up on Valentine's Day, and that's why I really wanted to talk to you now, because I know I have so many listeners, and they have made resolutions for finding love this year, and Valentine's Day seems like a big deal. So, very timely. It's also very timely because you have a new book that is coming out and I'm so interested to talk with you more about that. But first, maybe we could just talk a little bit about who you are, your background, so my listeners have a sense of you and then we'll go from there. So tell us about yourself. That's a great way to get started. Well, I am, <laughs> I'm known as America's top online dating expert and digital matchmaker. And one of the questions people ask me is, how did you become an online dating expert? And it really all started years ago, over 20 years ago, when I think I was on the internet before there even was an internet. Well, I was there, sister. <laughs> so, so it certainly felt that way to me. And I was a technology executive, and I decided that I had to replace the former love of my life when my heart got broken with an internet mate. And it was during the days of dial-up internet and ridiculously long, big phone bills because you were charged per minute. You know, we're so spoiled with Wi-Fi and Facebook. And I uh, went online, and I couldn't tell anybody I was doing it in the early days because there was a stigma with online dating. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm in chat rooms. I'm, I'm learning the art of how to create an irresistible online dating profile. And then the next thing you know, every single girl in town wants me to be their dating coach. So I basically continued to collect my personal stories, helped others. And then I released my first book about seven years ago, also on Valentine's Day, which was called The Perils of Cyber Dating, Confessions of a Hopeful Romantic Looking for Love Online. It chronicled my online dating journey to replace the former of love of my life with an internet mate. And what a story it is. We're going to be interested to hear more about that. But I also just want to acknowledge what an amazing um, practice you have built, business you have built. I mean, you have helped so many people find love online. And I just, you know, hats off to you because for many people, there is just so much anxiety around dating in general, but then you, you throw in some technology and do's and don'ts about texting and dates and what to do and profiles. And I mean, it's really, really hard to figure all of that out. And you're just so good at what you do. So I'm really just thrilled to be able to, uh, to talk to you today about your, um, your dating perspective. But now I do have to ask you about something really, really, really important before that. Shoot. <laughs> I recently saw a picture of you online, you with your arms around Matt Damon. What was that about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's Are you no dating Matt Damon? And, 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 no, there's, there's no scandal and don't call TMZ. Um, okay. <laughs> Both Matt Damon and I separately are very happy with who we are with. I, I, I got very lucky to attend the Golden Globes recently. And as part of the Golden Globes coverage, I happened to have been at the Fox party. And Matt was there, and he was right next to me. And we started talking, and somebody snapped a photo. So, so I did get a picture of my photo taken with Matt Damon right before I got a chance to talk to Leonardo DiCaprio. No! But well, but I didn't no, see but that But no picture. photo was taken that on that one. <laughs> okay, there's, there's no photographic evidence. What was that like? Um, really terrific. I mean, I'd met Leo before over Christmas where he actually was sitting at the table next to me at the Polo Lounge and I was having a Christmas lunch with my girlfriends. And we were taking pictures and we were being loud, us girls, and being festive, all dressed in red. And Leo came over and says, let me take those photos. I can do a better job. So we stood Did everybody up. like pass out? Or well, we sort of wanted to ask him to come in the photo with us, but we didn't want to be, you know, goo goo gaga eyed. So, so Leo jumped up on top of his seat in the polo lounge, 
grabbed the camera and started snapping pictures of us. And they ended up in the Beverly Hills newspaper the following week. Oh my gosh. And I should, I should mention to my listeners that Julie lives in LA. (laughs) That's so amazing. I can't even believe that. Gosh, I think that one one fame, my brush with fame, I, I saw Hulk Hogan from a distance in a nightclub in Manchester, England in like 1996. It was absolutely bizarre. That's that's it. You get Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon. I get Hulk Hogan. Whatever. So It is fun. Anyway. So um, now let's talk more about your career as an online dating coach. So clearly you have, uh, you're really just a pioneer in this field and you know a lot about it. Um, I want to talk with you about your book and the things that you have learned in all these years um, that can help my listeners kind of uh, figure out their own approach around how to be more successful with this. So what what are some of the main, main points you can share? I mean, we could even just start by talking about the apps that you're recommending to your clients these days. Those are great ideas. Right now, I think everybody needs to understand that online dating and mobile dating are one and the same. And so if you don't have your mobile phone attached to you, um, and you do because you look at your text messages, and if it was waterproof, it would end up in the shower with you, Mm -hmm. um, you, then you really are sort of delaying the opportunity to meet someone. So I'm telling singles, grab your mobile phones, If you're a member of a traditional dating site such as Match.com or eHarmony or Plenty of Fish or OkCupid, download those apps on your phone and make sure those push notifications are turned on. And the reason is the squeaky wheel gets the digital love deal. Mm. And if you wait until you go home and or you play silly, silly rules games of waiting for three days, guess what? Your dream guy may have connected with someone else, and if he's a great guy, he might say, I'd like to put all my energy into dating this one woman to see where it goes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear from you. How bad would you feel because you didn't have your mobile app on and you waited two days to respond? Yeah, totally. I mean, there's like the sense of urgency around it. And, you know, I talk to people all the time who are like, it seems like the dating landscape has changed so much, even in just the last couple of years. And, and I wonder if this, you know, the mobile aspect of it really has made it a different thing, because it's, it's very important to be prompt and to text her right back. And you're absolutely right. I mean, people who wait, it's sort of like the moment is gone. And the people have so many choices now, they just move on to somebody who is more responsive. Sad, but true. Yeah. So here's the thing about the mobile dating apps. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that Tinder has become the household word, and they're also afraid, oh, gosh, is he only going to want to hook up? I don't want casual sex. But what Tinder did for the mobile dating industry and for all of you singles out there who are looking for love online and offline is they've created an environment where we're used to swiping. We swipe right if we're interested. We swipe left if we're not. So other apps are coming out that are a little bit more traditional and are focused more on on dating, let's say, um, with more serious intentions. Not that people aren't finding love on Tinder. It's become real mainstream. But the fact is everybody's swiping. And so what I say to singles is you've got to be on these newer mobile apps and try out one or two and see what you like. And if you don't like it and you feel like you're getting creepy people writing to you, well then let's look at what you've put in your bio because your bio needs to be very, very specific. And it needs to say, I'm looking for a long-term relationship, nothing casual. Or you can say something like cute, like looking to hook up, swipe left. Be very specific about your intentions. And if for some reason you are looking to have a casual relationship, they're out there. Be honest about it. So I tell people that are looking for marriage, you know, be careful about the ones who want to hook up. And I tell the guys who are like hooking up, will you please stop swiping right on the women who want to get married? Yeah, seriously. 
have some decency. <gasps> yeah. Now, I, I love it that you are giving people tips about things to include in their profiles. And I know one thing that you talk a lot about, and um, you even have a, a, a coaching program devoted to this, is how to create an irresistible online dating profile. Tell us more about that idea. Oh, I love that. Isn't the word irresistible so much it fun? It is. I, I, I want to know. How, how do yeah, I, yeah so, I, I bet you everybody's ears perk up. So here, let's think about it this way. If you were in a store and you were about to buy a newspaper or a magazine and there were a whole bunch spread out there and one had a great picture and a great headline that captivated you and engaged you enough to want to buy that paper to read that article... That's the way newspapers are working. And that's also the way online dating is working. So number one, for my number one tip for how to create an irresistible online dating profile, create a catchy screen name. The catchy screen name mm. is the equivalent to the headline in a newspaper article. So here's some examples, and I always used my examples early on in those early days of dating. Um, my first screen name was Piano Baby, and it was Piano Baby because mm -hmm. I have a baby grand piano, and I play the piano, and I love music. Mm -hmm. The guys didn't know why it was Piano Baby, but it certainly sounded flirty enough for them to ask. So they would come right out and say, Piano Baby, uh, are, do you play professionally in an orchestra? I mean piano baby do you have a favorite song or hey piano baby you want to tickle those ivories for me so it, it it encouraged somebody to respond to me rather than seeing a profile that said julie one two three four five yeah like you kind of gave them something to uh ask about it was sort of like a an icebreaker that happened before they even knew anything else about you exactly and so another good use of the words in a catchy screen name and please don't use your birthday or the city you live in but what if what if your it's social a, security number your social security number your phone number your anyway one of the things a big word some research was done that one of the top words that men responded to profiles and was yoga really so if yoga is in the body of your about me section and somebody's doing a keyword search for yoga that's mm -hmm. great. But yeah. what if it's in your screen name? So I have clients that I did their profiles with them. And one was yoga lover in LA, yoga lover in San Diego, yoga lover NYC for New York. But if you love yoga and you really mean it, a guy is going to think, wow, she must be in great shape. She's in tune with her body. <laughs> physically, emotionally, spiritually, and oh, by the way, I wonder what her favorite yoga position is. Yeah, and just imagining the yoga pants and all, all that comes along with that. <laughs> right, so, I, so I, I created a profile for somebody with yoga lover in it. it. had the word love. Who doesn't like the word love? So it had love in it, it had yoga in it, and she attracted a guy who actually went to a yoga class once a week, and it was like his highlight of his week. And he wrote back to her because of her screen name being Yoga Lover, and they started to date. Wow, that is really neat. Thank you for sharing that tip. I like it because, I mean, it's a conversation starter, but it's also really helping attract people that you're going to be compatible with, it sounds like. Absolutely. And again, here's the thing about dating profiles. We, they're not billboards. They're about a way that someone can see what their life would be like if they spent time with you. Mm -hmm. And so this guy realized that he could take her, um, he could have a yoga date with her and they could go on yoga retreats. So he started projecting to the future about someone that shared something that he was passionate about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, that's a fantastic strategy. And, you know, I always, when I work with, with dating coaching clients, really help them um, kind of absorb this idea that your profile, it's, it's meant to simultaneously attract, but also filter out people who are not going to be good matches with you. So you're not wasting your time and your energy getting to know people that should, you know, could really self-select out based on what you put in the profile. And so I hear some of that too. Okay, number two, are you ready? I am. Okay, the photos. Yeah. Okay, 
both men and women are visual. It used to be just men were visual and women wanted like steady, stable guys with a job. Um, right now, women and men are seeing so many profiles and are swiping in every direction. She's hot, he's not. And so the photos mean everything. And the problem that I see with some of the people's profiles is they think that their dating profile mirrors Facebook or Instagram. And it really doesn't because Facebook, you can put up photo albums with 30, 40, 50 pictures, but on your dating profile, the magic number of photos, it's three to five photos. And even Tinder only gives you an option to have a maximum of six photos. So that's the sweet spot for photos. And when it comes to the photo, there are another couple of tips that I want to share. One, the first photo, the primary shot needs to be you, a headshot, smiling, looking into the eyes of someone else. And when I see photos that are primary shots with people wearing sunglasses, mm. I wonder what they're hiding. <laughs> I get that, yeah. So, so make three to five photos, post, um, grab a friend with a digital camera and snap a hundred photos in three or four outfits if you can't afford to get your photos professionally taken. But if you can splurge a couple hundred dollars to get photos taken and you could meet the person that's going to be the love of your life for the rest of your life, it is worth doing that rather than buying one extra dress. Absolutely. It's yes, it, it's an investment. I tell you what, I have worked with so many people who are gorgeous and accomplished and just like so beautiful and amazing. And I'll look at their profiles with them sometimes and, and they're like, you know, sitting on a couch and there's like kind of a dirty coffee table in front of them. Like, what are you thinking? And, you know, just, I mean, we have fun with it, but to really help them um, understand how incredibly important a really great photo is. And yeah, it's just a couple hundred bucks. You would spend more on a nice new dress, but the investment in that image could make all the difference between a really great profile and a, a, a Passover. At least that's been my experience. But now, of course, I, I do not specialize in irresistible online dating profiles. And so I want to hear more about your uh, tips past um, username and also photo. What okay, else? Here's, here's a couple other okay. comments about the photos because in reality, after the catchy screen name and the mm -hmm. photo, a lot of people don't even get to the bio section, the about me section, what you're looking for. It's the photos, it's the it's the screen name, and maybe the first sentence. So let's focus on the photos a little bit deeper here. And women, how many of you have a closet filled with little black dresses? My hands I'm, up. All right. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm just watching all the hands go up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not for your dating profile. Research from the University of Rochester has shown that men respond more often, more frequently online and in person to women wearing red. Now, I don't know that you've ever seen a photo of me not wearing red. <laughs> you look ravishing in red. But when I'm on TV, I always wear red. And here are the reasons why. Red is the color of passion. Red is the color of love and romance. We know the stores are filled with red boxes of candy right now. But here's another interesting tidbit, that red is also the color of the stop sign. And when a man is driving, he sees the stop sign, so he has to stop. Mm -hmm. So as he is scrolling through hundreds, if not thousands, of dating profiles, and they all look the same in the same little black dress, suddenly he stops when he sees somebody wearing something red. I think fuchsia or hot pink could work well as well. But Red is sort of my number one passion color. So I encourage everyone to just find, even if you just have a red sweater and jeans, wear something red and you will get more hits on your profile. Fantastic advice. And I love how specific it is. That's wonderful. It really is. And here's a few other, uh, few other thoughts. I mean, you have to have a full length body shot. Everybody says, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Mm. Nobody cares about an extra love handle. They just want to know that they're going to recognize you on a date. So you need to show an activity shot. Maybe you're playing golf. Maybe you're hiking. Maybe you're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower or the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. But either way, <laughs> they want to see that you have a life, that it's interesting, and they want to sort of get a glimpse of, you know, 
your body shape. Mm -hmm. And without doing that, every man tells me when she doesn't post a full-length body shot, I think she's fat. (gasps) They jump to the worst case scenario. Don't they? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Do you have any other tips for us or are those those your top tips? One last one last tip on the okay. photos and then we're going to move on. Right. And that is these group shots. Oh, yes, the group shot like I have a lot to say about the group shots as well, but we're right, here okay. to talk about your right. opinion. Shot so. of somebody cut off with the arm hanging over the shoulders got to go. But when people see group shots, it's very confusing to a man when he's scrolling and he's like, which girl am I actually going to be going on the date with? And he really doesn't know. Mm. So, and not only that, you might even look similar to your roommate. And not only that, if you're kissing cousins in the photo and he has his arm around you, he's going to think you already have a boyfriend. <laughs> so... Please make it all about you. Yeah. It's a little awkward when it looks like you already have a boyfriend. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, those are wonderful, wonderful photo tips. Thank you for sharing them. You're very welcome. Yeah. Are there other aspects to the irresistible online dating profile or have we have we covered most of them? Do you really focus on I, the name and the photo? I think, yeah. I think there's another really important part mm-hmm. and that is the about me section in the bio. Mm. If you're looking at a traditional dating site and you have an opportunity to write about yourself and what you're looking for, here are two main points. You know, I say brevity is important. Be as brief as possible. I think the sweet spot is 125 to 150 words on an online dating profile and then include a question. Because if you say, my favorite places to travel are, and you name them, Rome, Florence, Venice. (laughs) By the way, have you ever been to Italy? Um, it prompts somebody to answer a question. If you write a profile that's really lengthy, three, four, or five paragraphs, well, you have left nothing left for the imagination and nothing to talk about on the date. Mm. And people can be very, I don't know if judgy is the right word, but certainly filling in the blanks and making assumptions. And I found sometimes that people who share a lot about themselves, it's like people sort of decide who they are in advance, even if that isn't accurate. Has, have you found that to be true also? Oh, truth in advertising. It's something mm-hmm. we all dream of. Mm-hmm. Everybody looks better online, and that's okay. Everybody looks better on Facebook. We all have these glamorous lives, as you pointed out earlier well, in the yeah, segment. hanging out with Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio and Matt Damon, right? But, But at the end of the day, uh, if you don't really reflect who you are in your profile, in your communication, then you you don't have that truth in advertising. Mm -hmm. Authenticity and confidence are the best aphrodisiacs out there. Mm. So act, act real, be genuine, be warm, be kind. And oh, yeah, everybody wants a beach walk and a person with a sense of humor. Yeah. Seriously. But I also like what you're saying is that be brief and give them an opportunity to actually get to know you as opposed to trying to explain it all in advance. And and that kind of takes it to the, the next piece of, you know, modern dating that I think people struggle with is maybe, you know, they do make contact with somebody. Uh, they get a text, they get a ping, they get an email. Um, do you have any tips for people handling those those first encounters. Absolutely. And I think with the first digital encounter you get, when you get an email from somebody on a dating, excuse me, on a dating site or on an app, or you get that, that text message once you're a mutual match, you cannot assume that you're in a relationship. Men and women think differently. <laughs> Mm. Men and women think so differently. So the women think, oh, my God, he's into me. He's cute. He could be my dream guy. Does he have a great job? I wonder if he wants to get married. Does he want to have kids? And that guy's thinking, God, she's hot. I hope she's also nice. And I wonder what she'd be look- would she look like naked? And that's first date, first impressions of what, how men think and how women think. So I think that if you respond too quickly to a text, it looks like you have absolutely no life and you are only waiting for that one and only within seconds. Mm -hmm. If you respond too long afterwards, like over four hours later or over eight hours later, it can seem like you're just not into him and not that interested. Mm -hmm. So there's a fine balance in responding. I say respond to all emails within 24 hours on a dating site and respond to text messages if you can 
within the first hour to four hours. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to be sitting next to your phone and you already have had a dialogue with someone, and but you can write back to a text right away, just not every time. Yeah, yeah. Now well, that's that's great advice. Um, and now you know, as as people move forward, so they're texting back and forth a little bit. It seems promising. What do you recommend for how quickly um, people should meet after they've been conversing online? The sooner, the better. Mm-hmm. I really think that you need to take your relationship from online to offline as soon as possible. Otherwise, we have what I call the digital pen pal syndrome, mm-hmm. and you have it person that you're texting with and you feel like you're in a relationship but you're really not and then they go away and then they come crying to me that I think this guy just ghosted me Mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't ghost you you weren't even in a relationship so if you've sent a few text exchanges or email exchanges two or three hop on the phone suggest a phone date I'm such a huge believer of the phone date that lasts 20 minutes. No more than 20 minutes. It can be less, but never more. Mm -hmm. And in that phone date, see if you have any phone chemistry. And if you do, then put a date on the calendar to meet in person. Mm -hmm. If you don't and you feel like you're sitting in the dentist chair and somebody's pulling teeth uh, to get to, you know, and the conversation is just so, like, horrible, just say, I really appreciate your phone call, I don't think we have enough in common to move this forward. I wish you the best of luck in your search. Mm -hmm. But meet somebody at the end of that phone call. Make that decision whether you open up your calendars, put a date on the calendar. Yeah. Well, and and I I just love so many things about this. I also really like how um, you encourage people just to, to be honest with their feelings. Like, you know what? You seem like a lovely person. I don't know that we have enough in common to, you know, take this any further. I think that some people are afraid of like hurting people's feelings by saying that sort of thing. But what you and I both know from our perspective is, you know, hearing from people who just had somebody never talk to them again is that it's really much, much, much more hurtful to have people disagree appear and then just being left to wonder you know what happened so I like this for so many reasons and also you know having a phone call you know there's texts and then having a phone call and then going on a date um you know because you can kind of get a sense of who people are and I wonder if you feel like this helps your online dating clients coaching clients I should say um it feels safer with with all this because you know you you never do know who you're going to meet but what are some more of your strategies for helping people just feel safe with all this i think safety is huge and i think every man out there needs to understand that it's his role in life to help a woman feel safe and that is really critical because if a woman feels unsafe then she cannot be in a relationship with you and she hopefully will have the courage to walk out on the date. Mm. So here are some of my online dating safety tips. Number one, meet in a public place. Meet in the daytime if you can, but if not, please don't have like a 10 o'clock date. It sounds like you're the booty call for dessert and he's already had an appetizer and main course with someone else. Mm. Um, And so with, with online dating safety, The other tip I tell, and this is what I do with the singles I'm coaching, is I insist that they have a buddy. And most often, it's me. And they text me (laughs) before the date, during the date, after the date. So I need somebody to check in with me, and that's what my clients do. They check in with me when they go on their first dates to let me know that they are safe. And they will say, hey, he's really great, having a great time, just Go to the ladies' room, powder your nose, send Julia a text. Mm-hmm. Or they'll say, uh, doesn't look like his photos. He's kind of creepy. And I say, leave. Tell him you just got a phone call from whomever, whatever. You can make up a story and say you, you found out that somebody uh, just got rushed to the hospital. Maybe somebody did. And leave the date. And then, of course, never let them know where you live. Because if a date goes south, you don't want them showing up on your doorstep. Yeah. It always horrifies me when I hear some people talking about how, yeah, he came and picked me up, you know, for that first date. And I'm thinking, you are a trusting person. And that's wonderful. And and I, you know, we all want and hope that this is going to end well, but we do have to be careful, particularly as women. So I'm, I'm so um, encouraged to hear that you're really actively uh, talking to your clients about how to stay safe. That's important. Yes. Yeah. Online dating safety is the hot button for me. Mm-hmm. I guess 
you would think so having written a book called The Perils of Cyber Dating. Yeah. Well, now with that, I mean, we've been talking a lot about tips and I'm, I'm sure that there might be more things that you'd like to share and I'd love to hear them. But but I also really want my listeners to hear about this wonderful book. Um, and let's just start with the title. You mentioned the perils of online dating. So did you have any experiences where you were like, whoa. Uh, there are a few chapters in the book that were perilous. Uh, oh. We, ju- <laughs> I just came out with the audiobook version that mm-hmm. was released this week. It's on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, where you can actually hear me tell the stories about different chapters in my book with different, you know, situations. And I think the thing when we talk about perils of cyber dating, it's just sort of fun and cheeky talking about funny dates. You know, the guy that you know we talked about his colonoscopy and during Not lunch. Really. And of course, yeah, he did. And <laughs> of course, I never wanted to go on a date with him again because it, I lost my appetite. Sure. But but I think that some of the important things that you need to know is it takes time to get to know someone. Mm-hmm. And when we think about the fantasy of how often. We want to fall in love. It's so important to us. It's at our core. But being in love with love and being really responsible and logical about really what you're looking for are two different things. So I say take your time to get to know someone. Yeah, maybe a man's going to want to have sex with you on the first night. But hey, women control sex. We have the opportunity to say no, Mm -hmm. not just yet. Yeah. And, and I like that advice too, because yeah, it does take a long time to get to know people. And something that I have encountered is that, um, you know, again, people can be a judgy and obviously you don't want to have to endure a first date when you know for sure you're not into somebody. But if, you know, maybe they're not perfect, but to give it a little bit of time, maybe have two or three dates if you're sort of ambivalent to let yourself find out for sure um, before just saying, no, absolutely not, not a fit because people grow on you. They really do. I absolutely agree with that wholeheartedly. And Keep in mind, people are nervous on first dates. No matter how confident you are, nobody wants to deal with rejection. So lighten up and and, and make your first date just be a casual meet and greet to see if you have anything in common or any chemistry whatsoever. And start off wondering and asking yourself, is this somebody that I could be friends with? Is this somebody that I would even want to introduce my best friend to if I didn't decide to go out with them? Mm -hmm. Think about casting a wide net and expanding your social circle and meeting somebody new and interesting who might invite you to a Super Bowl party, who might help you with your business, who might be someone that, you know, has other male friends if it doesn't work out with him that he can introduce you to. So I get really irritated when people go, oh, I wasn't into him in the first 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. When he turns out he's like a really great guy, maybe he's too nice and nice guys, you know, finish last. But the fact is, understand that you're meeting lots of new interesting people that you wouldn't meet at work or in your neighborhood. And you have the opportunity to connect with people from all over the world 24 hours a day. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and what a great perspective that, you know, maybe you're not going to marry this person, but what if they are an amazing friend and know other people and and really just almost use it, I don't want to say a networking tool, because that's obviously not what it's intended for, but to really use it as a way of growing beyond your community. And, And it's so funny to me because I still talk to people who are very suspicious of online dating in general, mobile apps, laptops, whatever, and they still have this idea in their mind that they, they they should it turns into a should Julie they should meet somebody organically you know they should should be some cute thing where they bump into each other and she drops her whatever and he picks it up for her like that fantasy is still alive and some people are so attached to that that they can be resistant to this idea that we really need that tool to kind of get up and out and meet other other people um what do you do do you ever meet any clients that are are sort of like, yeah, I don't know about the whole online dating thing? Or are people really coming to you because they know they want to do online dating and are looking for your help? I don't know that there's anyone that's ever come to me saying, oh, Julie, I am super excited to join an online dating site for one year and go on three to five dates a week for 52 (laughs) weeks. I just can't wait. Mm. They typically come to me because they either haven't tried it They've just gotten divorced, they're newly single, and they're a little nervous about it, and they know they need help, 
or they come to me because they've tried it and they're really unhappy that they're meeting just, you know, the guys that have the selfies in the mirror with no shirt on (laughs) and, and, and they know they're doing something wrong. And so I think the thing is that people understand now that their friends are meeting people and getting married to people they've met online. They understand that online dating is mainstream. I have a um, couple that's getting married now, and she still will not tell anybody, even though I did her profile on OkCupid, that she met her fiancé on OkCupid. But we're seeing that less and less. And I go to the nail salon on the weekends, and I eavesdrop in on people telling me about, oh, telling the manicurist about their Match.com night date from the night before. So I think everybody's doing it. And I think everybody could use a little help. Because if you need help with your resume to get your dream job for work, and that may last a year to three years, you most certainly need a little help to get your dream online dating profile to find the love of your life. I get it. And and so let's talk about that for just a second. So, so say you have somebody coming in, either they're trying online dating for the first time, or then maybe they've been doing it, you know, for a couple months and they're not getting great results. And you see, you know, the profiles that they have put together, the, the pictures that they've, they've included. Um, what are some of the most common mistakes that you see people making when, when left to their own devices with this sort of thing? Well, it's amazing how I could see just the blurry photos that people are putting on their dating profiles. Uh, a blurry photo to me is just unbelievable. You know, there's too many options with digital, you know, digital phones and cameras right now that uh, I mean, if you're not grabbing your your you know, your Galaxy or your iPhone and taking fabulous photos and posting them on Facebook, those are the kind of photos that are great that need to be on your dating profile. Uh, the other thing that really, oh, just just gets me so much it, are the people that don't, don't spell the words correctly or have bad grammar. It makes you look stupid. You could be the smartest person in the world and have a degree from Harvard and maybe you just don't type well, but spell check and grammar check. I'm going to go back to the fact that if you have a resume you're sending out for your dream job, it's going to be, you're going to have use spell check and grammar check on that. You need to do the same thing on your profile and the emails you send to others. But there are some profiles that are so sloppily written, they're way too long or they're way too short, or they have photos of people that are so far away you can't see their face. Yeah, not helpful. (laughs) No. All right. Well, I'm glad that they come to you to set them straight. Excellent. Now, hey, I'm so excited for you to tell my listeners more about your amazing story. So you started by telling us about your your book, um, The Perils of Cyber Dating, and you've recently re-released it as an audiobook. And there's a reason why. Would you mind sharing your story? I would love to share my story because I hope this gives hopes to others mm-hmm. about love. Um, grab a tissue, okay? You ready to grab a tissue? I'm, I'm ready. I'm a therapist. Okay. I, I have tissues all over my office. Are you kidding? When I wrote the book, I wrote the book because I had my heart broken by the guy that I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And I went online to replace him and I went on hundreds and hundreds of dates. And what happened was we both ended up getting married to other people just five days apart. And he, we fell in love. Like you talk about that magic love, you know, that you meet organically, but Mm -hmm. we did, we fell in love at first sight. At this point, 24 years ago, we fell in love at first sight from across a crowded room. And it was just that fairy tale magic before anyone said hello, we both knew that we had just met the one. And we were together for seven years. And it was a very spiritual, powerful, romantic, passionate, just the most amazing relationship ever, except I was ready to get married and he wasn't. So Mm -hmm. I broke up with him. Mm -hmm. And I decided I was going to uh, find someone who was marriage-minded. And again, we both married others, and we had no contact for 16 years. No contact for 16 years. About a year ago, right after Valentine's Day, I didn't know he was getting divorced. He found me on Facebook. 
he wrote a book review. He picked up my book thinking he was going to be single and needed a little help. Not and, knowing and reading your his ex girlfriend's book on dating. Well, to find it was it. a dating. He thought it was oh. a dating advice book. He yeah. opens the book and he finds out it's about him. And oh my gosh. it was very emotional for him. Oh wow! So he finally contacted me after sixteen years of being apart. And okay, so we, h- slowing down just a second, I, I have to ask, what was that like for you to know that? This man that had broken your heart and that you'd you'd written all this stuff about in your book had actually read the book. Oh, I know. It's like I suddenly felt naked. He knew everything about me and everything everything that had happened to me in my life since we went our separate ways 16 years earlier. Had read my blog, had been peeking at me on Facebook in a little voyeuristic way, and I knew close to nothing. And so I, my first response was. How dare he write to me? He's married. That's emotional cheating. Mm. <laughs> and you know, he wrote a beautiful book review. And then my curiosity got the best of me because you one always wonders what happened to the one who got away, right? Yeah. And so I contacted him. I responded to him on Facebook chat. And we started chatting. And we finally got together and saw each other for the first time. And it was as if that chemistry and magic was still there, had never gone away. Sure, I'm thinner, and yes, he's grayer, and we're older, and we both had different life experiences, but we weren't sure if we were going to get back together for what I call chapter three. Mm -hmm. But uh, eventually, after about two months of communicating, we just realized that this could not be denied. And we got back together in this amazing fairy tale romance, which is all included in the epilogue of my book that just came out, The Perils of Cyber Dating, Confessions of a Hopeful Romantic Looking for Love Online. We wrote the epilogue together. It's in my words. It is so heartfelt. You will cry at the end, but you will absolutely believe in love. Well, that is just such a beautiful story and so amazing. I mean, just the the magic, you know, of going apart, learning, growing, having experiences, but then rediscovering each other again in the end. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Julie. Well, That's really I have cool. To, I have to tell you, I mean, I had no expectation when I wrote the book about mm-hmm. him and our breakup to get over him. It was just to help others and to heal my heart. Yeah. Never could I ever imagine that a decade and a half later that that book that I wrote, you know, was the book that brought us back together. It reunited us, yeah. That's so cool. Thank you so much for sharing that story. And I know that your book is also in addition to being a wonderful and very entertaining story about your adventures. Um, People can learn a lot from your experiences and from your wonderful advice. So is there anything else that you would like to, to share with my listeners before we end? I feel like there's so many things that I can ask you about that I probably haven't yet. You have seven secrets to finding love online. You have anything else you want to share? Well, if you're interested in mm-hmm. and downloading the free, I have a free audiobook called The Se- Seven Secrets to Finding Love Online. It's ah, free. Mm-hmm. Just go to go to cyberdatingexpert.com slash flirt. You can sign up for the free weekly flirt newsletter. And once you do that, you'll get a copy of The Seven Secrets to Finding Love Online. Uh, I love social media. So if you have any questions, you can tweet me at Julie Spira. I'm also on Instagram. And of course, uh, facebook.com slash cyber dating expert. Okay. Fabulous. So if you want more information about Julie's seven secrets, you know where to find them. You know how to get in touch with her. And Julie, now where can people get your book? You can go to my website and find out more about the book at cyberdatingexpert.com or go to Amazon and type in Perils of Cyber Dating or type in Julie Spira. You will see that the book's available in a paperback edition and in, in a newly revised Kindle edition. And of course, the um, very emotional, beautiful Audible edition uh, that you can hear the audiobook version. Okay, fantastic. Julie, thank you so much again for not just your time, but all of your, just the generosity that you you shared. You're so generous with providing real helpful, actionable tips and advice. And so on behalf of all my single listeners that have caught this episode, thank you. Thank you.